Andrew here, Sterilizer Autoclave Solutions, 704-966-1650, option three for free tech support. Okay, we are doing Midmark troubleshooting videos. Midmark M11 slash Midmark M9 new style troubleshooting video. So in a lot of our videos, or even in some of the maintenance um, to replace a lot of the parts, um, if you know we work together, diagnose them, or you've diagnosed them yourself, you will have to re to take off the top cover. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. You basically just need a Phillips screwdriver, 10 minutes or less. Uh, first thing we'll need to do is unplug the unit. I would do it from the wall and then do it from the back here. Um, so it's four pieces. It's a top cover, back cover, uh, and you'll see why we'll have to do that in a minute, and two side covers. So what I would start with is the either side, doesn't matter. I'm gonna loosen the screw up here. There's four screws on the top. Loosen this screw, discard, set aside, don't lose them. They're specific size. One here. Okay, and then we're also, so as you can see, it's coming out now. So we'll also have to do the bottom so the thing doesn't fall down. As you see, it just fell down a little bit. So hold your hand there. Um, it can fall down, it's not a huge deal. If it's new, it might scratch it or something like that. Maybe you don't want that. So anyways, all right. So another very important point of taking the top cover off is you gotta unhook this. Uh, basically this engages the safety valve. So with the power off, obviously you need, kind of need a longer screwdriver. You're gonna get in here and there's a Phillips screw in here. Um, and you're gonna have to loosen that up. And if you can peek your head around the back here, you can kind of see where the, it's a key ring that it screws into. Um, loosen it up, loosen it up, loosen it up. You don't have to do it all the way. Uh, hold it up while you're loosening up and then you can get it a certain amount of distance and then you can slide the key ring over in most cases. If you get it far enough, there we go. Okay, so now, now the pressure relief valve is disconnected. So um, now we can take the top cover off. But first, again, I will go to this right side panel now. You got a screw up in the front here. Discard and save. That doesn't make sense. Just save them, don't throw them out. Don't discard and save. I what I'm talking about. But anyways, okay, so right side panel, again, this one has one in the back also. This one might fall as well. You can do this in either order, honestly. Loosen that one up, I'll grab this with both hands, pull it here, put it to the side. Okay, so now we got the top cover and the back panel left. Top cover, we go here. Um, reasons for taking this off we could be obviously replacing the safety valve or cleaning the reservoir. I would recommend cleaning. You know, honestly, I would recommend sending it into a company like ours. We'll clean the reservoir for you. But if you elect not to do that, um, I would recommend cleaning the reservoir. Number one, you got to get it to a baseline. So you got to get it real clean to start and then you can maintain it easily like anything else. Um, or you can, you know, clean it, by, you know, semi-annually. But get it to a baseline and then just, if you drain the water weekly consistently and you don't let it build up biofilm and you're rinsing off your instruments good um, before you put them in there, um, possibly even putting them in an instrument washer. Okay, we got three screws back here. As you can see, um, this is the back panel. Remember, we got the power receptacle hooked up. Um, I'm unscrewing this again, save all these screws. Okay, so power, power this back panel is falling off now, so hold on to it. Um, you know, take a picture of where these wires go, um, unhook the fan, um, and I would even possibly unhook this. Otherwise, you can let it sit like this. Um, it will stretch out and lay on a flat surface if you got a lot of room. And then we'll go back here. Since we've got it connected, you'll have to take the top cover off, and that should just pull right off. But keep in mind, we got ground screws here, we got uh, the digital display here. So you'll pull this open right here, boom, and then there's a connector with a, if you want to zoom up here, there's a connector right there with a little thumb jobby. You push on that and pull. 
And then, you know, don't drop this thing. It's pretty expensive. So, uh, okay, so this is the printer. This is a brand new unit. So it comes with a printer cable hooked up. There is a push button on this thing. If I can get it. Bear with me. You don't want to drop that. It's like 700 bucks. I'm going to go to the other side so I can see a little bit better. Push connector. It's in there, baby. Pull it out and then you can bring this and move it to the side. Set it down somewhere. Who cares? But this is the, the, the unit itself. Here's your valves. Here's your pressure relief valve. See, this is why I kind of recommend taking this off. Otherwise, you got to move it everywhere. You might not have this much space or nice, this nice dolly. You can just simply disconnect those. But here's your air vent bellows. If you need to replace that, you got to go back here to do it. You got to take that panel off. If your safety valve is leaking, you got to, uh, you know, take this off, replace that there. If you got any bad fittings, you got to take those panels off to look at it. Wouldn't hurt to give it a visual inspection from time to time or send it into a cert qualified service technician that can take it apart, put it back together, somebody you can rely on. Um, my main goal of this, okay, so this is what holds the condensation coil. This is another coil here. Um, this is what holds that in place. Uh, very specific screw, leave that like that. We're gonna take this off. This basically just comes off like this and you'll see it, on, you just kind of wiggle it loose. Discard this. Um, and then here we then, then this is the cover for the reservoir. I would clean this if this is brand new. If you if the person who buys this one drains the water weekly, like we will guide them to do, then they'll barely ever, if ever, have to clean this reservoir. Um, what happens is a lot of people don't clean the reservoir. They don't follow their weekly and ma ma monthly maintenance instructions. They don't. They just keep adding water on top of old water, and then it builds a biofilm. Then it clogs valves and then you're in for a little bit more of a hassle. So, um, so you slide this off. This only goes on one way. Obviously, you can see it only goes on one way. Boom, that's the way. And then you got this gasket. Sometimes these will warp and go bad. They'll cause leaks down here. Not a huge deal, just... Um, okay, then, it, then that will reveal the reservoir. When it comes time to do weekly and monthly maintenance, if you've already cleaned it, then, then you don't have to go down this road of taking all this apart. You're just cleaning filters and stuff like that. But if you got to do a deep clean in here, I'd get some degreaser uh, and some other cleaning products. we got OptiClave you can use. You squirt that in there, let it sit for 24 hours, and then you get a, a toilet brush and you can clean here. And then you'll flush and rinse. So basically you'll get a gallon jug, you'll dump it in here, and then you'll flush it out the front You'll pull the drain down into a bucket and you'll flush it out the front. You'll do that one, two times. You get a rag in there, make sure, get all the biofilm build up out of there, and then, then you're good to go. So, as you can see, I got this thing in pieces. Um, I can show you how to put it back together in the next video. Uh, thank you very much. Like and share. Please uh, share us with your friends. Subscribe to our channel and have a great day.